Today I'm going to talk about three different methods that you can use to wire your pull barn. So stay tuned. Hi, this is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. If you're interested in tractors, post frame construction, and homesteading, well, you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell, and join in on the conversation? So there's three different methods that you can use for wiring your barn. The first one is to use Romex. The second one is to use AC cable. And the final one is to use conduit. And let's take a look at those three different methods and what their advantages and disadvantages are. If we look at Romex, it's easy to work with, it's inexpensive, but it has a couple of drawbacks. Number one, it has to be enclosed inside a wall. In other words, you have to have not only an outside wall, but an interior wall for it to be used legally. And that's an important consideration because if you're going to have an interior wall, it also means that you better have a pretty good electrical plan on what you want to do and what you want to put here, there, and the other thing, because later on down the road, if you have to make changes, you're going to have to get inside those walls and ceilings in order to be able to do that. The second disadvantage of Romex is the possibility of rodent damage. And I can't think of a more pleasant experience than to try to figure out where the short is and then have to make the corrective actions to make that work properly. So of all three methods, Romex is my least favorite method that there is. The second method would be to use what's called AC cable. AC cable is flexible steel conduit that has the conductors already in it when you buy it. AC cable has a lot of advantages over Romex. The first one being that you can use it either with an interior wall there or not there. So if you're building a simple structure and you don't plan on putting an interior wall on, you can run AC cable as long as you take it through the studs and don't put it on the outside of the studs and do that legally. And the nice thing about that type of situation is it's visible. So if you want to make changes down the road, it's easy to access what you're going to do and uh, make those changes. The other thing about AC cable is that if you have an interior wall and it's finished, you can mount it to the outside of the wall also, just like you can uh, EMT conduit. It's certainly something that's within the realm of many people to be able to do the labor on themselves. The advantages of using conduit is that they have a lot of wire capacity to them. So you can add circuits and things down the road by using the raceway you already have. It makes it much simpler if you want to make changes in a building where you've got enclosed walls and ceilings. Even if you decide to encase the conduit inside the walls, it's much easier because you've got pipe available where you can pull additional circuits. Now let's take a look at the cost. There's a huge difference in cost between Romex, AC cable, and conduit. Let's take a look at an example I've got here. This was done in 2019. I don't know how long this video will be up on the internet. Copper is a commodity. It goes up, it goes down. So rather than dealing with the exact pricing at this point in time, uh, let's talk about the percentage difference that you can expect to pay between Romex and AC cable, which I've got calculated out to be about 30% based on 250 feet. And I use that because Romex comes in 250 foot rolls. If you're gonna go from AC cable and use half inch EMT conduit with three number 12 gauge wires inside that 250 feet of conduit, the price from AC up to that conduit is gonna be about 52%. And if you really wanna make things flexible for yourself in the future, you can go to three quarter inch conduit. That conduit with three number 12s in it would take the price up another 29%. In other words, the price difference between Romex and three quarter inch conduit is almost four times. Because there's a significant difference, it really is important that you take into consideration how you plan on using your building now and in the future. Long after you've absorbed the price of putting an electrical system in, you're gonna to have to live with the consequences of what you've done. The other thing that I think is important when you're considering a building is what can you do if you have to make changes? In my particular structure, because the ceiling is 16 foot tall and because it's got a ceiling, metal ceiling on it, if I need to get up into that attic and make changes, I'm probably gonna to have to run scaffolding or a, a scissor lift in order to be able to get up there and do it. So really that's, for my size ceiling, isn't really a good solution is to put something that's up inside that ceiling at all. 
And so the more I thought about it, the more I thought, okay, for me, the best solution on my building is the surface mount conduit. And that's what we went ahead and did. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the right method for everybody. And there's certainly times when I would have considered another way to do it based on my circumstances. For example, let's say I built a barn and it was only a 12 foot ceiling. Then it would be a relatively simple matter to get up inside an access panel with a step ladder and be able to make the changes that you have to make. That's a game changer in terms of what material I would use and I very likely would use an AC cable in that type of application. The next thing to consider is the labor of putting these things in. If you have a little bit of electrical uh, capabilities, then running Romex or running uh, AC cable is not a big deal. Even if you just get them run back to the panel and have a professional electrician come in and finish the wiring for you, uh, you can absorb a lot of that labor cost yourself. If you're going to use conduit like EMT, now your skill level goes up a little bit because you have to be able to bend conduit or you have to buy pre-made elbows, which increases the cost of your hardware. The elbows aren't cheap. It probably maybe would offset some of your labor, but it is going to be more expensive if you don't have the capability to bend conduit. So it might be a good time to buy a conduit bender and learn that skill. The advantage for us when we were using conduit is that we really didn't have an electric plan even when we were doing the conduit. I had my LED fixtures, I had an idea of where I wanted to have circuits and how, how many, but we were able to make all kinds of changes as we were going along. There's really no right way or wrong way to do things as long as you're building within the National Electric Code and your existing building codes that are in your community. It's important that you do things so that they're safe and following code is gonna give you a safe structure. In addition to that, if you ever decide you wanna sell your property, if you haven't done it properly and they come and inspect it, they're gonna make you put it up to code standards anyhow. Why not just do it right the first time?